The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock till noon. Love to take your calls at 877-927-6648. Let's, well, first of all, thank you to our guest host. Great programming. Let's go straight into the market here. We're looking at a Dow. Now, this is very interesting because I had a signal on Friday, and it seldom fails. That, that said that there should be some warning weakness before a small weakness before the Dow rallies. Um, but instead, there was pre-market weakness in the Dow and the S&P that went negative. But from the moment the bell started, we've been up. And the Dow's up 100 at 18,495. Within the context of this rectangle that you can see right here, this is the E-mini chart. And it's at up 925 at 2177. This shows it quite clearly that we made a peak D recently. What, what, what do I mean by peak D? Let me just quickly do this. I'll always do this. I'm always asked about it. The chap wave methodology, you try to identify the lowest, most obvious bar, and you merely count each successively higher peak, label them uppercase A, B, C, D. When you get to that fourth highest peak, other things can happen. Keep it as simple as possible. Well, wait a minute. We got... The MACD and stochastic in the daily chart of the of the E mini pulling back sharply. Keep your eye on this left chart. I'm going to show you something. Here's the Dow, I N D U, um, down sharply from the high, 18,668, uh, the recent high about the 15th of August, and it comes all the way down under 18,350. And this is a very strong bounce. And this bounce I accounted for over the weekend and all the myriad charts that I sent out. And I showed that this is, I have to stop calling this Elliott wave because it really is, I've spent so much time in it over the last six months. Actually, it's more than that. Formulating this concept of five waves. Um, this is different to the Chapman wave. Going to P, A, B, C, D, can go to E, F, and even a G. This is counting in a specific way, and you can see that we've had it succeed so many times from the low that was made on the 27th of June, where it went up in five ways, one, two, three, four, five. We pinpointed that at 18,622 in the Dow. We then came down in five ways, one, two, three, four, there's your five at 18,247, and that was around about the 2nd of August. We went up in these five ways, one, two, three, four, five, we went to 18,668. We, we went short then. Uh, the last move up, we went short the Dow and uh, still short. And what we looked at was one, two, three, four. And I said on Friday that there were, five was about over here. And I said, I don't believe that this can be five. I think that there has to be a deep decline that we can have a bounce and then maybe come back down. And the level to watch is 18,325. That's the support level from way back about the 5th of August. And lo and behold, on Friday, we went to 18,325. No, 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 that can't be right. Was it exact? No, no, no. We went to 18,335. I thought that would be a miracle. 18,335. And we've got the... And I said that I believe that this is going to be five. And therefore, I cannot call it... Uh, um, and Elliott Wave, because in all of these, we've had a couple of things that just aren't typical Elliott Wavers. They just, in other, other words, from the top to one with a rally, that wave one in Elliott Wave and wave three, that was way short. Not only that, it just barely snuck below the 18,468 level, went to 18,466. I still managed to call that four, and we've come down, and I'm calling this five, at least for now. My eye says there's a good chance we're still going to make another move to the downside, and maybe that'll have to be five in the end. But so far, as I say, this has worked out pretty well. 
And um, we haven't done any covering because of a couple of things. Uh, but that's I just wanted to show that because it's a technical, it should be technical Friday. It happened on Friday, so I can't really, it's too late. Um, you know, a lot of it happened after the bell. I mean, after, after my show. So the Dow is in a sell mode in the daily. I made a big deal over the weekend that the weekly chart is not... And it's not even in the sell signal. It's in leg E, peak E, confirmed last week. And, and there's enough strength here to say we could have a, a, a bounce going sideways, just in a sideways consolidation, a rotational correction. If the Dow breaks 18,000, say 200, uh, on a closing in the daily, that'll impact the weekly for sure. And then I'm going to have to say, probably we've now got a sell signal. Meantime, it's just the one, one time frame. The, the daily that has gone to the uh, sell mode. And you can bounce from a sell mode. I'm just saying that explains the, the pullback. And the MACD's weak, the, the technicals are all, all weak. It's way, it was way under the nine period moving average, and now it's above the nine period moving average. So, and what I normally do is I grab the outer levels of these candles and I say, okay, that's too big. That's too big a range, but I'm going to keep it there for now. But I should be able to make the range much narrower. And I love to say that rectangle formations last a lot longer than your patience. Have a look at this. This is, let's look at this. There it is. This is the E-mini. This is the continuous contract, but it's trading at this price right now. Look how long, from August the 5th, we've been in a trading band, a pretty narrow trading band, just a sideways move, made slightly, uh, slightly lower low on Friday. And we've come right back in the middle of the range above the 200 period moving average. Well, let me just continue with all the numbers. I'll do it together with the uh, charts. So we did the Dow, we did the S&P, uh, SPX in the sell mode in the daily, not the weekly. Look how beautifully the weekly is holding and the monthly is still looking good in both of those charts, the Dow and the S&P. Now what we're looking at is the QQQ series. Um, this is very interesting. It's at a high level consolidation. I've, I haven't yet put the down arrow. I should, but it closed not ugly under the nine period moving average, but it closed under the moving average for three days. I should have technically put a down arrow. We'll see if I'm going to do that. But the weekly chart is still holding fair. Look at the technicals, 95% in the stochastic. So I, I'm kind of impressed with what I'm looking at here quickly, the IWM. And then I'm just going to run the numbers for the other charts that we're looking at. And I'm going to go to right now. So the IWM has made a peak C1, C2. I would not be surprised if it squeaks to a, a leg D to the upside. So here we go. Gold. Gold right now. Uh, when I last looked, it was down a little bit. Yep, it's down seven, uh, 70 cents at 13.25. It made a peak C. It's in its trading range. It hasn't really broken down. I would say below 13.10. Gold is in real trouble. Uh, short term, intermediate term, term it starts to impact it, and I might have to consider that that's a G and not a B. Uh, the dollar had a very nice move on Friday. Today, the move is equally strong, not equally strong, also strong, and it's above the 200 period exponential moving average at 95.74. And the TLT, you know, I'm looking at the TLT and I'm just saying, you know what? It's just stuck in the range. I'm not getting carried around. I'm not buying the TBT thinking it's going to go down. I'm not buying the TLT thinking it's going to go up. I need to just wait out another few days to see where it breaks. Above 141.50, very good. Below 137.50, not very good. Bowser Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. We'll be right back after this break and I will cover some questions and we'll see if our caller who's going to drop off is back again. Down to 504. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how Everbank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? Everbank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global 
global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. And I uh, had a, a question about uh, um, Alcoa. Nice candle on Alcoa. Now, it keeps having these candles, these very strong candles, and then it just gives it back. It's up 22 cents at 10.22. There are a couple of things that are going on, and I think we just need a little patience here to to forage through the um, melee uh, of the, you've got some of the agriculturals that are doing the same sort of thing, some of the uh, steel, some of the uh, in this case the aluminum, uh, just in this whole commodity sector. So let me just do a couple of things while I'm thinking about it. Alcoa, if you want a risk reward and you got in this morning, our caller, I would just say. Hold it because I think this is a perfect entry for a bounce. But I have to treat it as a bounce because it's got the character of keep it keeps on coming back down after it bounces. So if you're in it and you want to hold it for two days and you got in, let's say you got in somewhere around 10, uh, knowing you, you probably got in at about 10. Uh, what was the low today? 10. Yeah, you probably got in around about uh, 10. 07 or 10 11. All right, if you're in at that level, I would just raise the stop on on almost all the position to about to your entry level. So you're going to not take a loss no matter what. And then it gaps, gaps down tomorrow. And then what I would do is part of that position, I try to keep it for two days because when it does this kind of candle, most of the time, not all the time, it has a two day run, maybe even three days. That'll be the test. So if Alcoa at 10 21, can hold its position even if the market suddenly turns around and I've got some sign I'll talk about it in a moment that there could be a little intraday reversal at some point uh, I'm not sure it'll be the reversal or just an intraday reversal then I would say to you if it's still holding well and it's still holding above 10 16 try to keep it for tomorrow if you if you if you want to do that at least take something off to give gone of that profit that you like to get short term that's what I would do and when it comes to pot potash uh, trading up 11 cents that's a little different i think you can have a better feel for this than me my my thinking is that it has lower highs and lower lows at least for a little bit longer maybe even a week or two 
But in the meantime, you, if you got in, I'm just going to say that's the one I'd make it. I, I would not allow it to go back under the low of the day of 16, and it's a 16.15 right now. So there are a couple of questions that I had. Um, <clears throat> HQY, HQY, now why is that familiar? HQY, HQY, HQ is not a G, it's a Q. There it is. Yeah, nice chart. So this is a little tough for me to A, B, C. You know, this is the, what is it? It's the Health Equity Inc. If you're along in Health Equity Inc. trading at 31.59, I do not want to interfere at all with your position. If you're long, stay long. And I would think about adding to this at 31.59 between 30.30 and 29.80. I would, I would, if you got in much lower. If you only now just got in uh, within the last couple of days, that's a different strategy altogether. But if you're in more for the longer term, I would add another position in that area, 30, 22, 29, 80. And I would, on that second position, I would definitely have a stop of about 60 cents because this one should work very quickly. A, B, C, D. Is this an E or is this a brand new A in the in the weekly? I, it doesn't really matter. The monthly chart is very strong. And this is like a brand new leg B in the monthly chart. HQY, I'm putting in my book, if I can find my book. And I'm going to put it down as something to watch. HQY. Okay, so congratulations if you're in it. Now, um, and my target is that if it can go, if it can close by Wednesday above 30 to 10, then the target will be that left side high bar of the, of December of 34.99 to the 35.78 high of November. But I'm not saying in one shot. It's a one shot deal. I think that that is a target. It's a reasonable target in this environment. Okay. A couple of things. Oh, I forgot to talk about the market. Yeah, let me just show you. This is the Dow. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the E mini uh, trading in the 10 minute time frame. It's gone to a C and it should go to a D. So it's acting very well. Um, the 120 minute chart actually gives you a little bit more information if I can just find it right here. I want to go to the continuous contract. There it is. You see the continuous contract, this rectangle formation is suggesting that there is a chance now that if there isn't a pullback by the end of the day at 2177 up 875, if the end of the day it's only up 4.30 or maybe $2.50, it's still plus, but it's up only that much. It's saying, no, it's going to be a struggle. Just in and out of this rectangle and a, a, on a shorter time frame, what did I say I would do? I, on the 10-minute chart, I've already done that. I showed the 10-minute um, chart. Where did it go? That was a 10-minute? No, this is a 10-minute chart. Ooh, I'm charted out here. There are. On the 10-minute chart, it had a rectangle. It's broken out of it. And that rectangle is like a, it's like a propeller shop right from the low of... Uh, at one o'clock on Friday, uh, no, it wasn't two o'clock, three o'clock at 21.57, and then it has a big spike. No, it couldn't have been. What, what, what am I talking about? That was uh, before the Fed announced, uh, around about the four o'clock. That's four o'clock on the 26, seven, eight, nine. So that's Friday. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm confused here. So anyway, I'm looking at the ESU 10-minute chart, that big spike, and then that sideways movement. That's like a propeller shaft from there, from that point to peak A minus, and then it goes sideways, and now it's broken out to the upside. So I suggest to you that there could be a little bit more to the upside. I don't think in this move it's going to go to the high that was made at 1020 on, oh, of course, 1020 on the 26th. That's what it is. Whew, that was confusing. I forgot. Sunday night. What is this? Checking for updates. I don't need you. Um, and this is important. It was at 10.20 on the 26th, and I forgot to trade it overnight, and that's what happened. So that high, I think, might have to wait a little bit. And now, now I think I'd like to do this. Um, I'd like to just take a moment. Let me go through a bunch of things here. What I was showing you is the daily charts. Look on the left, and now I'm going to look on the right. See the E-mini daily sell mode. We do nothing. Look at the Dow. I-N-D-U. Daily plop weekly nothing i've got the two channel lines redrawn in case but you just have to step out of that you have just to go 18,580 um in the dow and all of a sudden you've got yourself the potential for an oval pattern a stalk leg formation and look at this beautiful stalk leg formation in the weekly chart in the monthly chart 
broken out nicely, holding well, hasn't tested the 18,351 level yet, has tested at 18,247. So we're going to be watching this when that was the high over there. So now what we're looking at is within the context of this pattern, the down monthly, um, 17,851 would be if there's a real sell off come Friday because the job, whatever it is, you know, you know. Um, and, but if, if, if it stays stable after that, if by Monday we're trading anywhere between 18,300 and 18,600 in the monthly chart, that's really good for the next month. Okay, let's go to the S&P, SPX, look at the left side chart, left side chart, okay, pulls back, look at the weekly chart, look at the monthly chart, breakout also with the same oval pattern. Let's go to the QQQ series, that's the NDX 100. Pulls back, just a modest pullback, big deep pullback in the technicals, but modest pullback in the price into a leg A. It's now trough A if it, clo if it closes above uh, Friday's low of 116.08. And look, the weekly chart is barely acknowledged even that it had anything happen. Uh, let's go to um, the New York Stock Exchange, NYA.X. Same thing, sell signal peak E in the daily. Month weekly chart says what? Well, what happened? Why, why are you getting so upset? And look at the monthly chart. That means a lot of work. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Dallas up 99. SP's up 980. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. I'm looking at USB, US Bank Call, and I'm looking at WFC, Wells Fargo. Is that, that was the question, WFC? Yeah, WFC, Wells Fargo. 
Whenever I think Wells Fargo, I think of that at the uh, uh, Albuquerque where they have the balloon festival. They have the, the Wells Fargo balloon. And this, this, this behemoth tries to <laughs> float amongst the others. And it's just kind of, it's very heavy, very big, very heavy. Um, okay, so which one would I like? Uh, well, uh, pity we didn't talk about that on Friday uh, because that would have been a perfect day. It's already uh, USB is showing you 4406, up 66 cents. And very nice W pattern in the weekly chart. Monthly chart is looking good. That's a B that we're in now in the monthly chart. And Wells Fargo, WFC. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just suggest that Wells Fargo has more to go, and it could play catch up at 49.55. And since they're both at about the same price, 40, 49, saying 50 for the one and 45 for the 44 for the other, um, I would prefer to go with the one that's acting. It's got a better chart. I don't. This is if. If you've got other bank stocks, then you can play the catch-up one because sometimes the catch-up one uh, has a nice percentage gain, even though it's not one of the better charts. But I'd prefer to go with safety right now, and I'm going to suggest Wells Fargo is the one out of the two. Let me give me, give me one second before I, I conclude that. So you made your peak F, then you went to a G, and look how nicely it's held. It did break that low, the, uh, the low of... Uh, back in October of 2014, 38.10, it went to 37.07. No big deal, but it did break it, so I have to start over. A leg B, and it hasn't gone to new high. The MACD is about to cross positive. Let's go to USB. Um, USB. That was USB, right? Not UBS. USB as. Um, wait. Was I looking at USB? Now I've got to go to Wells Fargo. That's it. Okay. Wells Fargo. Yeah. I think I'm going to say USB. I think I would have gone with a big money center bank, Wells Fargo. Uh, I don't, I actually, I don't really keep in touch with the, anyone. I don't know anyone ever mentions it to me, US, uh, a US bank. I, don't, I know nothing about it. Chart wise, I think it looks better. Chart wise, it looks better. That's all I can say. So, yeah, $40, $44 right now. I, um, I try to have two positions. I'd get, Two thirds now, but I'd put one third in at about 42 because I know you like to look longer term. I'd put another position in at about about 42. And um, do I do I talk to you about a stop? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, you've got to be prepared that over a period of four weeks, if there is a pullback and a big market pullback, and the banks do stuff instead of going higher. Then you've got to prepare that it will touch the 42 level, could even hit the 200 period moving average of 41.81 in the 41s. And I, I'm sure that you're aware of that. But that's my thinking right now, yes. And at this particular time, I mentioned over the weekend, I think that the uh, bank sector is what's the XLF doing. Yep. Oh, look at that nice move in the, in the XLF. Uh, I must mention that we are long in position in the XLF. And that's the financial sector. Yep, it's looking good. So far, all the things that we've been discussing um, are, are kind of falling into place, except we did not get a, a pullback in the Dow. Um, uh, we didn't get a pullback in the Dow before the rally, and that's what I expected. We got it in the futures, but that doesn't count because it's from the 930 bell. So this is a, one of the few misses in this particular index. Uh, that's the way it goes. Um, all right. So I hope that helps. Now, here's another question that I wanted to go through. When you go, when you're looking at the IYT, which is the, the um, iShares Transportation Index, it's held sideways. It really, at 141, it just needs to break into the 146s. It's only five points higher. Um, it's not a big deal for a, you know, for an index like this. And crude oil has been pulling back. So I, I'm just a little, it's a little mysterious to me. And crude oil, I know I always get calls about it, crude oil. Crude oil right now is in that pattern that says it got repelled at the 200 period exponential moving average, as you can see right here on the daily chart. The weekly chart technicals are right on the cusp. The MACD is flat, but it hasn't broken to the upside, but it hasn't broken down. And the stochastics only at 51%. I really would have loved to have seen the stochastic closer to 70% than 51%, but that, that, that's, that's the way it is. So what do I think about crude oil? I think crude oil is in this choppy range. I, I think it's limited to the downside and it's limited to the upside. It's done all that it needed to do for this particular move. 
Now it's consolidating because it had that very big move that went from under 35 to over 54 to about 54. And it took a big hit down to 40. And now it's bounced up to 48. This, you see, it's making smaller and smaller moves. So I suspect that it's going to just hang around in this area between 45, uh, maybe 45, 44 is the base. And it's going to have a tough time breaking above 48, 49 uh, in the next week or two because of the resistance that I'm looking at. It can do it. It's a, I don't know if it's going to happen all in one move. Uh, question about uh, TU. What is TU? TU. TU. Okay, don't, don't do it that way. Is that a TU something? T oh, to your note. Uh, to your note. T U. U? Yes, there we go. Okay, so now what we're looking at is well, let me show you something else instead. This is my 30 year, 10 year, and five year yield chart. I think this is going to give you the picture. I'd love to give you a bigger picture rather than just the smaller, nitty gritty stuff. In the bigger picture, what I'm looking at is that we've got another arch formation right here in the yield. We've got another arch which had gone to a B. I didn't see that. Now it's at a B. And both of them have gone to B. The 10 year went to a leg B in the weekly. And that needs to be brown. And I usually use yellow, I think. Well, let me just see what I'm going to use. Okay. And what's very important about this <clears throat> is that the five year has gone to a leg B as well. This is one of the tightest little fits we've had in, in this sector for quite a while. So is this a spring-loaded coil that's ready to rip to the upside, or is this just going to kind of meander? And my thinking right now, based on what I'm seeing in the market, based on what I'm looking at, based on the fact that the financials are moving high, but my thinking is that they didn't really do much on Friday. They acted okay. I think it's, it's other sources now that are saying, hey, financials, financials, and they're being pushed. Fine with me, but that's what I'm thinking, because we don't really have the evidence just yet. It's all speculation. Now, if I'm looking at this in terms of the yield, I can just give you numbers. And all I'm going to say is if the 30-year at 22.41 right now takes out 23.30, I can't just take out. This has got to really take it out. 23.30, bonds are going to break support, and they will be coming down. And that would take the 10-year 10, the 10 from 15.89, probably to somewhere between 16.60 and 16.80. And if that happens, the five-year should go from 1336 right now to leg C, and there'll be somewhere in the 13... So that's 1336, huh? No, why did I put 13... Oh, 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 that's the bo bottom of that. Okay, this is different. <laughs> Just as well, I didn't uh, take it. That's 1225, 1250s, 1260s in the five-year. So I hope that helps you because... As it stands right now, yeah, I'm seeing some strength in the in the in the shorter term. I'm not seeing it in the uh, longer term. And shorter term sometimes leads, uh, even though they move together, sometimes leads in the velocity to the upside, the downside. So watch it closely. Those are the parameters I'd be looking for uh, for an upside break. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and we've got the Dow up 106, s 10.80. I'll be right back on this Monday, three days before. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. So uh, I mentioned the then that uh, the KIE, KIE, uh, which is the Spider S&P insurance sector, didn't I just do K? Didn't I just do that? Oh, did I do the other one? Oh, I should do the K I E. I did K I E. K B E. K B E. K B E. What did I just do? I just spent the break. I usually, yep, there it is. The K B E, which is the Spide S P Bank ETF. Bank ETF is in leg C in the daily. Um, leg E. I'm calling it E for now. It actually could be E. I actually, I, I should call it E B because the technicals are so strong. In fact, I. I, I, I want to favor B, but I'm going to be kind of conservative and call it EB. And the weekly is in B, monthly is in B, but it hasn't broken the all-time high in the 36s. And then the question was, well, the statement was, hey, that's funny because Traveler, Travelers is not anywhere near the high. Uh, well, it's kind of near the high, but it's at, not at the high, and the others are. So uh, Travelers, TRV, um, trading at 118.55 up at $1.41. Looks very good. Looks like it's going to either continue... If it doesn't do in the next two days, it's going to continue leg C in the monthly over 119.30. I'd had a round number 115 low, so this is really good action. Um, and if it does that, that'll continue leg C if it's before the end of the month. And if it's next month, it'll be D. And in the meantime, you've got your cup formation here in the weekly chart. It also should go to a D. So you've got the, the weekly and the monthly in, in uh, cahoots. And you've got the big spike up, those three bars. It must have been good earnings or something. And now you've made this rectangle consolidation issued to uh, break above 119.30, the high of the 1st of July. Dow's up 115. So this is, what, this is very interesting, and I'll tell you why. This morning... I was determined that I was not going to be fooled by my by the fact that the dailies almost all to a New York Stock Exchange just everywhere were, had made a peak and had pulled back sharply enough in the technicals to say that their daily charts were all in sell modes. But I made a big deal that the monthly charts were still looking very good. And that says to me, we might even just switch from the short side to the long side. I, I, I'm not afraid to do that. I need some proof or get stopped out and then be free to do whatever we want. At the same time, in the portfolio, we have um, a, a short that we got on Friday that plunged over 20 points and then uh, closed about, I think, 16 down. And even now it's down again today. And we've got a, uh, a long position that we got this morning. We've had it periodically. This is one that whenever I talk about on air, 
Um, I could be up two points by the end of the day. It's either to take in and us out for a little bit of a gain or a little bit of a loss. I'm not even mentioning it, but we did manage to hit one of the two positions this morning. And I don't even want to say whether it's up or down. Um, we got it. And we're looking at both the long side and the short side. Why? Because this is a bifurcated market and fund managers have nowhere else to go. That's just been the theme. Even if there's a quarter point hike, fund managers just, there's nowhere to go. And they have to find somewhere to put the money. That's, what's, that's their charter. And therefore, they're going for some of these uh, sectors and some of these stocks that are um, have been winners and, and continue to be winners. And the ones that were winners that are turning around are having a very well-deserved break, even if they were some of them were the very best um, in their sector over the past couple of years. So I had a question about the QQQ wave count. I think I did it. The wave count is a peak E. I did, in this case, I should have put the um, down arrow, but for some reason I just stalled because the price had held quite well, actually. Um, We'll see, uh, because sometimes uh, I can do that on a delay. We, we don't have a position. I'm just labeling it in the chat. Maybe it's the weekly chart that's so impressive. Um, so now I want to do something else. I want to show you, look, wheat, dust wheat. That's the only thing I ever learned in French when I did French for at the uh, blacksmith house or whatever it was called over in Harvard Square, Cambridge uh, Education. I used to do that while I was teaching in Harvard Square. I used to slip out to learn a little bit more. Okay, this is um, uh, wheat. Wheat is just plunging. I mean, the, the, the monthly chart, the weekly chart, the daily chart, it is, it isn't ugly. It is hideous and it's not good. I mean, I'm saying it's not good as a chart formation. The implications, I think, are much deeper in terms of inflation and all the other things. Look at corn. Corn also took out its low from, oh, oh, oh no, it hasn't. The low is 32, 320 and three quarters back on the 12th of August, and today's low is 320 and three quarters. Right there, it's a double bottom. Is this a double bottom low? I don't think so. Not from the from the pattern I'm looking at. The weekly chart shows, shows nothing in the stochastic to turn yet. I actually have to see the price move before that can move. Um, sometimes it will do that first. What if I'm looking at, did I do corn? Um, right at corn. Uh, yes. Did I do soy? No. Um, so soybeans uh, made a peak C minus. They fall back there. So you've got wheat terrible, corn right on on the cusp of breaking left side support, and you've got soy having held much better than the others. And the weekly chart and the monthly chart are way better. So something's telling me here that uh, in the survivorship race in this particular period in the next week or two, we've got to watch soy real closely because if it breaks down. We must see what happens to the others. So yes, the other thing, high-grade copper, I didn't do. High-grade copper is trading right now um, at 2.0825. And it is testing. Remember, I, I did this left side, right side price time match. It's got until Tuesday, Wednesday, until Wednesday to hold the support. And that key support level that I'm, I'm pinpointing right now is uh, 2.0615. If it takes that out, it's probably going to go all the way down to the 20. 2.02 level. Oh. So high-grade copper is not helping here. So now let's go to something else that I want you to do. Um, I've written it all down. Let me see the next thing I needed to do. Yeah, talk about the polit politics. I'll do that tomorrow. I'm running out of time. I don't want to waste time on politics. Um, but I do want to do this. The IYR, the IYR made a trough DE, a trough E in the daily chart. There again, that's definitely a sell mode. The weekly chart has given all the indications that it could be in a sell signal. And this is the the REITs, the U.S. REITs, the iShares U.S. Re, uh, re, retail ETF sector. This is the commercials. And uh, what we're looking at here is the monthly chart, that candle is... is Actually, it's an engulfing candle right now. This is one of the candles that I favor using as uh, uh, something um, uh, of as an important turnaround. But if my daily and my weekly are starting to show deterioration, I'm watching this because what it says is if the month closes with a very ugly candle in the IYR, 
there's a good chance that at 8266 up 91 cents today, it's going to reverse and it's going to come down to test the 7936 nine period moving average. And that'll be important because this is, you know, don't forget this is a part of a dividend play. It's the whole structure. The IYZ, which I mentioned over the weekend, the IYZ um, is in exactly the same situation. So it's where there goes that beeper again. And all weekend I kept saying, gee, don't forget to get to that beeper. And of course, I can't find the little switcher, which is somewhere around. Yeah, all right. Well, you know what it sounds like. It sounds like that's the beeper. And I guess that means we're going to go to a break in the next 30 seconds. The Dow's up 125. Let's go to that chart again. There's the, oops, that, that's A, B, C. It's in leg C, D. It's in leg D in the two-minute chart. And the 10-minute chart, as we're getting off the air, I mean, as we're getting off for the break, is in leg, oh, that's an extension of C. Very nice. Strong move. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or swim. Next on TFNN. Hi, hey folks. I'm just looking. So, yeah, a couple of good questions here. Question about, um, here we go. So the retail index, the RTH, which I said has given me a sell signal and a sell mode in the daily, the weekly chart is not great, but it hasn't given me a signal because the MACD is still okay and Stochastic still at 84%. So I'm watching this. This is Walmart, Home Depot, Amazon, CVS, Lowe's, uh, Costco, um, McKesson, Target, TJX. It just goes on and on and on. Staples, BBBY, etc. Now, um, and this is going to be very important. I don't think this recovery is going to be so quick in this chart. So I'm watching that very closely because it could, could, could bounce and make the H pattern in the weekly. 
Uh, but at 79.59, if it breaks 77 support, uh, that's just not good. That's the nine period moving average in the monthly, which it hasn't broken since it broke out back in uh, uh, March, I think. Yep, March. So look at the XRT. Now, XRT, when I, I checked the components, I was shocked because the XRT has a bunch of, uh, the, which most of us don't even think about. It has Groupon, uh, Gap, GPS, Outer something or other, Outer Wear, Outer something, T TLRF, Turf, what is it? I forgot to look it up. Fran, the Fran is the clothing, Francisca, Francis, Francis something or other. So look at SHLD, of course, a really great stock, Sears and Roebuck, yeah. SHLD, Sears Holdings. Ugh. Oh, what a piece of junk. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry, I should never say that. What well, can you do? Piece of junk. Uh, the chart looks like a piece of junk. Uh, that's all. So I, I don't know about the XRT. Um, they, they, they're in different categories. I'm not going to put them together, although they're kind of linked in a certain way. I like the RTH. I love the RTH. It tells me a great deal. And that's the one I'm focusing on, right? So as, the, as it stands right now, the weekly chart is terrific, okay? Just, I mean, that's how simple I can make it. What's the wave count? Um, the RT, RTH, the wave count in the daily, made a peak E. It made the Chapman wave a stalk leg formation. When this rally, I mean, when this decline is completed, when the beak is finished, it can sometimes have a rip-roaring move to the upside. Then you're on your own. You have to use a different technique. But look at that leg, body, head, a neck, head, beak. Oh, man, what can, what can you ask for? What does that actually mean in real terms? It means, oh, I didn't even get to talk about this. Uh, did I? Well, I'll talk about it now. Um, what it means is that uh, within the stalk leg formation, let me move this out just for a second. Here it is. I showed that I had a whole thing on this over the, over the weekend for my subscribers. That's the pattern we look for, the leg, the body, the neck, the head, and the beak. It's just simple. You find that, and you, it just, it's a beautiful, we've seen it so many times since, since I, I started here at TFN. I remember talking about it, and everybody shook their head and said, what, stalk leg? What, what, what are you talking about? It looks like a stalk leg to me, and that's it. Um, so that's that. And now, I, did I talk about the 120 minute Dow chart? Yeah. So you see this extension to the upside? This looks more like a new one. If by the end of the day it breaks down, and the Dow, instead of being at 18,516, uh, suddenly closes under 18,460, uh, below the nine period moving average, then I say, aha, now we could be ready for another sharp slide. But at this point, I think that um, I have to look at it and say, yeah, I think that that five is done. Yeah, I, th I believe I spoke about it. You know, I remember talking about it. And since it was, must have been the show, I must have talked about it. Okay, enough of that. Now let's do this. We've got just a minute, uh, a minute remaining. Let me go through this. The VIX index. Remember we spoke about the VIX index? The VIX in the teens says, oh, be a little bit careful. But I, I, no, going into the teens means be a little careful. Going to the 15 says, uh-oh, when you're being a little much lower, now you're in the 15s, selling is coming in all the time. Now the, the VIX is down 61 cents at 13.04, minus 4.47%. I think that just for now, the VIX is saying there's still buying pressure. And if the VIX suddenly turns around by later in the day and it goes back to about 13.25, you can see some of this rally ameliorate, come back, come back a bit. So I'll be back tomorrow. Now don't forget to me, uh, email me about my, my new highs webinar. I'll talk a little bit more about it tomorrow and what you can do. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay tuned for all the great programming and the options that are coming up next. Your swim lesson. I'll be back tomorrow. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.
This is TFNN.